make tools so that we can keep access to that data and use it in a, in a very accessible fashion. So you guys got to see some of these. One of them was this QTL analysis, which is out on the web for free, courtesy of the University of Tennessee and people there. What we then jumped into out of that web QTL was the UC Santa Cruz genome browser, and what that told us was on our chromosome, uh, these, by the way, are some data I made up, but this is on chromosome 6. For this little patch of chromosome 6, this listed all the genes that are known, and what you guys did was essentially data mine and go through those genes and find one that was highly expressed. Okay? And when I did it on my own and had my own made-up data, I found one uh, GABA A receptor A protein, GABA receptor A protein, and I found one that was highly expressed in olfactory bulb, just like you did. Okay? Uh, we also talked about the fact that this expression data came out of something called uh, DNA microarrays or gene chips. And we talked a little bit about those, how those are made. Uh, that we used uh, fluorescent cDNAs. What it gives us is the pattern of gene expression across different conditions. And, and so I believe the way that they got that relative expression was to look at cDNAs that came out of an olfactory bulb, say, relative to a standard uh, bunch of genes, okay, a standard mix of genes. It allows us to look at thousands of genes at once. The downside at this juncture at least is it doesn't give cell by cell resolution. You have to look at region by region. And I wanted you to hear about these. These are now widely used in research. They're also popping up in the clinics. As I said, people are looking at different kinds of breast cancer tumors to see the pattern of genes that they may dis display that helps the clinicians figure out the treatments that they are going to prescribe. Okay, and then uh, we jumped from the UC Santa Cruz genome browser into the Allen Brain Atlas. And what that is, they have all these people up there in Seattle doing in situ hybridizations for gene after gene after gene after gene. I mean, they literally have just armies of technicians. And so uh, they have some in situ data. So we can, once we found our gene that was highly expressed in the olfactory bulb, then one of the questions you might want to ask is, what cell layers is it expressed in? And so this uh, Allen Brain Atlas will tell you that. You can go there, and if that gene happens to be in their collection, lots of them are by now, uh, you can see uh, th here's the in situ. And this, this is a gene that was pretty ubiquitously expressed, but you can see here in my olfactory bulb, uh, it's really expressed in that layer. This was an in situ that was done with digoxygenin, so you get this reaction product that's kind of this deep purple when, you, when the, there's labeling. And what I also had you do was look up the reference atlas, so then if you saw a pattern like that, you could look up the reference atlas that they've also created and find out, okay, what's the name of that cell layer? All right, so that's available to you too as a bioinformatic tool. Um, we then, I had you go to Entree Gene. Once you had your gene that was highly expressed and you knew where it was expressed, uh, this should have been something that looked fairly familiar to you from the Bolter and Winemaster unit. We finally ended up at a page where you could find out the actual sequence of that gene and also the coding sequence for that gene. So if you wanted to uh, go in and say, PCR product part of it or something like that or do some other manipulation with it, you could know that sequence. And then also out of this UC Santa Cruz genome browser, we went to PubMed, which is your tax dollar at work, and it gave you some articles about that gene. I had you find one, and hopefully you're reading it, and you're going to tell me all about that article. Right? Okay. So those are all bioinformatic tools. Uh, just to summarize, so what WebQTL did, it performs that QTL analysis for us and gives us the likelihood ratio statistic as a function of markers on chromosomes. UC Santa Cruz Genome Browser tells us the known genes over a given region of chromosome. Probably with the mouse we know all the genes and gives the relative expression levels of genes. Allen Brain Atlas then gave us the in situ hybridization where you can find out cell layers and cells in which the gene was expressed. Entree Gene 
gave us the sequence, and PubMed gave us some more information. So again, these are all tools that even as I speak, people are using, and I wanted you to see them, okay? Because when you get out of here, if you get a, a job in research, you're going to be using these things, very likely. And then my last uh, objective was to review and introduce uh, some molecular techniques we did in the Bolter Winemaster module, uh, PCR technique. Um, so this is, should have been quite familiar to you. Uh, so that gave, PCR is used to find out, uh, again, the uh, difference for these different recombinant inbred strains if they have the B or the D form. And again, just I can't emphasize this enough, this is the first F2 generation, right? So after they've been inbred, they're not going to have, you're not going to see any of these heterozygotes. They're going one way or the other. But anyway, the way those markers are discovered is someone goes through and PCRs up little hunks of DNA and sees if your F0s are different in that little hunk of DNA. And so it's a technique that's allowed us to put markers at different places in chromosomes so we can track did that come from the F0B strain or F0D strain or some other cross for that matter. I've already talked a little bit about gene chips, and uh, so I'm going to just skip over this slide. But again, they are in research. Uh, my colleagues are look using, we have one now for the zebra finch, so we're trying to figure out if boy zebra finch genes and girl zebra finch genes are differential uh, relative to a mix of genes, so they're used widely in research uh, and also in the clinic. Uh, we, I, do you guys hear about in situ hybridization in other classes? Is your neuroscience, what other classes do you hear about it? 101C? They're doing a good job there, Joe. Okay, so uh, just to review, what in situ hybridization does is it allows us to find out which cells express a gene by probing for the mRNA. And why would we care about mRNA? It's on its way, hopefully, to making a protein, right? And the probes uh, to that mRNA are usually made out of RNA. The ones I've done are RNA. Uh, or you can make them out of DNA also. And we make probes that are what we call anti-sense probes. So the mRNA we call the sense strand because it's coding for the protein. So the one that is its complement we call by uh, the anti-sense strand. So you make an anti-sense probe. And you also, when you do that, make a sense strand and you use that for your control. The probes are labeled, uh, the Allen Brain Atlas that we saw earlier, the probes are labeled with something called digoxygenin, which makes a color reaction. You could label them with radioactivity, uh, which people don't like to use very much because it's too dangerous, but it does still get used. Uh, the probes are then, when you splash them on the tissue, they'll hybridize with the specific mRNAs, hopefully being made in a cell, so you can find out cell by cell what cells are producing that mRNA or expressing that gene. The downside is at this juncture, you can probably only look at a couple of genes at a time, okay? So you can't look at thousands and thousands. There's just no way to do it right at the moment. No one's been clever enough to figure that out. Maybe one of you will. Okay. And again, uh, what you get, uh, this is a gene that was pretty ubiquitously expressed. You can see it up here in the olfactory bulbs. Uh, what's this, by the way? You neuroanatomy fans, say it loud. Hippocampus, how about here? Cerebellum, so it's expressing all these really heavily. Uh, for this particular, this was the GABA A receptor protein, so that's no big surprise, that's pretty ubiquitous, right? Yeah, all right. But at any rate, uh, you found a gene uh, that was hopefully highly expressed in olfactory bulbs and tracked down what cell layer it was in. Okay, and I can see that my last slide got cut off. What happened to it? Yep. All right, let me see if I can find it. All right, the last thing that I need to tell you is about uh, things that are coming up. And the other thing that I emailed you besides, no, nope, I don't have it. Besides uh, how to get some extra credit is next week we're going to start the next unit, which is SWIMI, which 